I would like to start by asking you to think about your school time. How was it? Was it nice and fun, <laughs> or rather not? I would like to tell you some stories about it, but I wouldn't like to start with a sad note. Let's just use the results you get from Google. When you Google a phrase, school makes me, all the results are negative. School makes me sad, school makes me suicidal, school makes me cry. Oh my God, you don't want to live, you know? So my, my you know, question to you is why is that so? Why have we created such a nightmare from a thing designed for the benefit of young learners? I mean, young people. I don't believe there are any children. They are just young people. And when I decided accidentally to become a teacher, I promised myself I was not going to be a boring one. I was not going to be a sad one. I was not going to be a bad one, because I believe that there is no place for bad teachers on this planet. So why do we have bad schools and bad teachers? The answer is because the system is bad. The system is testing oriented, which is highly unnatural because all the tests are written, like 99% of them, and these tests are stupid. Let's call it by name. They are A, B, C, D tests when you are either good because your, your answer is like black or you are bad because it should be white or vice versa. I believe this is highly unlikely to meet the situations in real life where uh, things are, are not that radical. We can be pretty correct and manage and sometimes we can manage even we, if we make some uh, mistakes. So again, Testing is unnatural, it is unfair, because some children have got talents to pass the written test, they can concentrate, they can sit for longer periods, and some kids are just built for action. Actually, 95% of kids are like that. They are like, like wind, you know, they want to run, jump, play, they just want to live. They just don't want to sit for a long time during any tests and they get, uh, get bored, and all these factors can influence the results of the tests, which can result in their future being successful or not. So I believe that the tests are highly unfair, and what is more, they are unclear, because there are so many factors influencing the performance that children who know the material can fail, and children who don't know the material can succeed by sheer chance. We've got a pretty famous example of a failure of system of uh, education. Albert Einstein, one of, one of the smartest guys in history, was a very bad student. He was expelled from school, he just didn't fit. And that's why he became such a brilliant thinker. And he produced a sentence I truly love, it says that if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will spend it, its entire life believing it is stupid. And you know what? I am, I am such a fish. I had big problems with my German at school. And even now when I, when I go clubbing to Berlin, I do it often, I still think I'm just stupid and I cannot speak German. And this is not true because speaking a language doesn't mean you have to be perfect in it. You can just manage it doesn't matter if you say, my sister likes uh, music or she likes music, this is just a detail. This is something for the students of some linguistics and other things, but if you are interested in learning language just to go partying or just to work and so on, just to do your business, uh, this is more like playing basketball when you just want to uh, can you throw it back? Thank you. When you just want to communicate something. So it's like basketball and some passes are perfect like, uh, like that and some are imperfect when you have to take some action, when you have to negotiate and even if they are, if they are like terribly imperfect, you can just nego negotiate the meaning and you can repeat that and you can Oh, one more time, even, you know, if you fail multiple times, one more time, in like real life, finally you manage that. And this is what language is all about. I've got a flash in my brain, I use some system, the wave of sound, and when the person gets the same flash in the person's head, we've got the act of communication, and this is it. 
Finally, the language is not English anymore. It's like the English people lost control over that. It is not a Queen's language. We don't have any professors kind of saying, oh, this is correct and this is not. The pop culture, the films, music, all the people from China, India. By the way, China is the biggest English-speaking nation on the planet. This is not English anymore. It's globish. It belongs to me, to you, and to all the guys on the planet who use it. And we just negotiate the meaning and we set the new rules. So all these complicated tables, all these um, rules are kind of vanishing. And there is a theory, and I believe in that, that the language, that, <laughs> that the globus language, so uh, the version of uh, English, will be more and more simple and some characteristics will just disappear. So we will say, she like music and it's gonna be perfectly okay because it's now, it works now and it will be uh, the new norm. So when you just um, have a look at my uh, first slide, you can see that there is a mistake in it. But I don't know if, if just everybody noticed that there is one letter missing in the last word. However, everybody understood it. So I consider this a good act of language. So just people communicated with me or I did communicate with uh, people, no big drama. However, in school, sorry, that would be a very big problem and probably some points would be lost. I consider that we should learn English naturally, like any language should be learned step by step and I mean baby steps. I mean steps like created for the student and in reality, like in touch with this no reality. So when a student is young and everything is so new and stressful, we should take really small baby steps and we should start with a, a very limited number of words. Let's say 250 words for a start, of course not in one day, but we should just introduce the words like food, body parts and other things which are important for the student. I've seen so many examples of complicated words like cybernetic t-shirt or some types of food, exotic types of plants like bittercress or some other things, you know, for the children who were seven or eight or they had to write the names of uh, the days of the week in English, which is so difficult. And these kids who were seven, they couldn't write the Polish names of the weeks, of the days of the week. So that was just a crime, you know. So we need 250 words to start uh, communicating. We need only two tenses. And 700 words are used by a given person in a given language. So for example, my mommy uses approximately 700 words and so does everybody on the planet. So this number, 700, can be achieved in, I don't know, four weeks if you are motivated. So why do people learn so many years at schools and they fail? The answer is it's a bad teaching process or bad learning process or both. So people are not motivated, the teachers overcomplicate this stuff and they just create problems instead of solutions. I believe in solutions. This is why I create diagrams, some funny methods and analogies and I take this process step by step in a, a way natural for the kids. And I wanna demonstrate one funny method you can use. So you just need like to, to present something like for example, forming questions. All you need to do is to simplify this uh, knowledge and for example, you can write on your fingers and toes and for example, you can say it is black. Whew. Then magic happens and you form a question. Is it big? And you say it is not big. And then you ask the question, is it clean? And so on. Another funny method for another aspect of learning, uh, for example, pronunciation. Uh, in Polish, we don't have some sounds that exist in English, for example, th sound. So people confuse words like 
a tree, three, and three. So I'm not in prison. Yeah. So people uh, confuse it, and sometimes it leads to some misunderstandings. Like my student one day said, I brush my teeth every day, which is not what she, actually a pretty girl, what she meant. So uh, to illustrate that, you just need your like finger, you need to touch a nose, a chin, then touch the finger with your tongue and produce sound, like in fufeu. Spaghetti, zebra. It might be funny, and I love humor in my uh, methods. I believe that education, which is sad, is no education at all. I believe it should be funny. It must be funny. And it is better if it is funny in your room than you speak that you brush your teeth every day. This is not the teeth, like the teeth this lady brushed. They were her teeth. Okay, so this is the, the only thing I. I kind of uh, emphasize, and I am aware that my pronunciation may, may not be perfect, but as I said one minute ago, nothing is perfect now. So uh, when you understand me, when you know what I brush, it's okay. Uh, I believe that uh, a good teacher should be funny, a good teacher should be creative, and I believe that I have to be a kid inside, and I am. I've got so many passions. I love snowboarding, I love good music, I love my life. So I believe that teachers should be happier, they should be funnier, they should be kids inside, just to be in contact with the, with the reality. Because they, they deal with young people who are not boring, who are not sad, they are just amazing and they are happy, and this is how we should, we should be. So in my uh, methods, I just emphasize that my life must be funny. So if I work eight hours or 10 hours a day, I just don't want it to be like a prison. Like I don't want to hate my job, because who can learn from the people who hate their jobs? This is absurd. I believe that this should be funny. So I use clips, I use music, a lot of games, a lot of humor, anecdotes, and I speak little. I just make my students speak because they've got wonderful stories and they are wonderful people and this is my honor to work with them. So what we do, we do not separate all these, mat all these aspects of the language like grammar, vocabulary, writing, speaking and so on. We just do it together. So we can watch a clip, we can listen to this clip, we can discuss it, then we can write something about it if you want and so on. So it should be more like real life situations. It shouldn't be artificial. It shouldn't be boring. I believe that we can make a difference and that we should respect the kids and that we should see them as the future of our, of our planet because they are the future of our planet. And I would like to live in a better society, in a better world. And I believe that the only hope are not politicians, hello, or some business people, or I don't know who, aliens or religious uh, leaders, nothing like that. I believe that the children, wonderful children, I was honored to work with, and the people who are better than me, because when you just compare you know, my level of uh, development at their age, they are just brilliant. And I was deep in the forest when I compare my students to myself at their age. So I'm so proud to be working with wonderful people, the people who inspire me, and I want to inspire them. I want them to make a difference because I believe that what we do to children, they will do to the society. And the society needs some changes. We need some creative people, funny people, happy people, tolerant people, brilliant people. And we will achieve that only by creative, funny methods. This is the, the only way. I just don't believe that we can bore people to death. We can make them scared paranoid, suicidal, and we just send them to some shrinks to give them medicine and that these people will change the planet. It's not possible. And I would like to inspire you to some action. First of all, talk to your kid. Observe the materials. If they are good materials, I mean relevant, not something crazy. I saw horrible materials in my life and I, ju I just wanted to burn them, you know? So when you just open the book and you see some complicated stuff you don't understand, that means that your kid's teacher is crazy and, you, and that your kid needs help. And I believe that we should help the, the kids 
And we should help these bad teachers by talking to them. And I think that we should take some action and everyone can do that. If you are a parent, if you are a student, if you are a teacher, your duty and your responsibility is to make some difference. And I wish you that. It's great. Thank you.